Well, welcome to this latest update for the NowRail model railway control system. And today I'm going to be talking about version 0.9.1. And the update that I'm going to talk about mainly is the PCA 9685 boards and the fact that I now have built in LED control. Now, as always, if you go over to the Digital Town website to the NowRail page, Obviously, you can download the latest version, which is the 0.9.1 that I'm using today. But the main function that I want to talk about today is PCA 9685 LEDs. Now, the system already has the servos. And this means that you can use the PCA 9685 servo control boards to obviously set your servos and send various accessory commands to them. But dropping down a little bit further as we get to 0.9.1, I now have the PCA9685 boards controlling the servos, but now there is also the control of LEDs. Now, there is a difference between controlling a servo and an LED in that the frequency of the PCA9685 board needs to be much higher for the LEDs, otherwise you start to get a sort of a flicker. So within NowRail, I've built the system that you just add your LEDs or your servos using the particular functions. And the only rule is that you cannot have servos on the same board as an LED. The two can't be mixed together. If you try to mix the two together, you will actually get an error message that comes up to tell you not to do it. So the system is pretty easy. And the great thing about these PCA 9685 boards is you can daisy chain them. So with sort of 16 LEDs per board, for me, this is ideal for built my buildings on the layout. Now, going over to the webcam, as you can see, I've got one of my buildings on the breadboard, quite literally. Um, this one is being set up ready for an exhibition. I went and volunteered my layout for an exhibition in 10 weeks time. I am working like crazy. Uh, as you can see, the buildings aren't on the layout. This uh, building has three LEDs for lights and a fourth LED that is a fire flicker. This is a PCA 9685 board. If you haven't seen one of these, they're about three or four pounds. You can't see them very well due to the building obscuring the, uh, the breadboard, but I actually have three separate boards on here. The important thing is with these boards, you need to change the addresses by soldering across these tabs if you want a different address for each board. Now, I've got one of these boards connected to this building and the other one just to a single LED. So this is my controller usually used for turnouts, but I've just repurposed it for the lights. And literally I can now turn on the lights as an accessory. As you can see, I've got the three lights going. Turning that one off, if I now turn this one on, you can see that I have an LED here that isn't just turning on, but it's actually flickering. I'm just going to turn that one off. And I'm going to go down to this bottom LED. And as you can see, this LED is completely different. This one is doing an arc welder effect. So within the now rail system, I've built in basically three effects. Obviously, you've got the standard on off. There is the arc welder. There is a fire flicker. And then I have also done a gas light version that I'll show you in a minute. Let's turn that uh, arc welder off before it drives me bonkers. Now, going back to the Digital Town site, as always, there is an explanation of how to set all of this up and the various sort of options that you can have. What I'm going to do, though, is show you literally how to do this in code, because it's probably easier to do it that way than work through the web page. So this is the latest version, 0 0.9.1. 
the big items that you need to set if you go to now rail user setup dot h all you need to do is make sure that the wire library is uncommented and also that the pca 9685 servo board variables are uncommented now these variables here are only used for servos but just make sure you uncomment them anyway because the system when it reads this value for the pca 9685 boards it doesn't mind whether they're being used for servos or for leds so literally those three lines and this line here that is all you need to do in now rail underscore user underscore setup dot h now let's go and see how the actual system works in the um, main file now because now rail has its own built-in pca 9685 driver literally you initiate the layout one thing i've had a couple of people have some issues where they have tried to add various items before this line any items in the setup in now rail must always come after this line this basically starts the system and then as you run these different functions it literally adds the leds just as i've added servos in previous versions now with this particular version to give us an idea of how this works let's just see if we can stretch the screen a little bit more so we have the board address so 0x40 the hex value of 40 is the default value for a pca 9685 board that's with no tab soldered i've then got ports 13 14 and 15 those are at the very end of the board furthest away from the connections i'm also using port 12. the accessory for the lights the address i'm using is 2001 it then is going to turn itself on when the um, accessory is sent to direction one and the effect that i'm using is zero now on the website there is the whole list of the different effects so zero is standard on off one is a fire flicker two is a gas light three is an arc welder now one thing to be aware of with the effects each effect has its own individual timer so if you had two fires flickering next to each other they will actually flicker at a different randomness to each other they won't all flick on and off together this is particularly important especially if you're using the gaslight effect because if you had a street scene with 10 15 gas lights if they all flickered at exactly the same point your eye will immediately pick that up and that is something that i wanted to avoid so we have the effect is zero the next value that goes in is the maximum brightness now this is a value between 1 and 4095 so i've got one led at maximum brightness one at sort of half brightness and one at sort of an eighth brightness i'll be honest with you um these are numbers that you're just going to have to play around with at the very high values it really doesn't seem to make much difference between 2000 and 4000 it's as you start to drop down that you really start to see the leds getting dimmer there is then an effect value now because these are just being turned on and off which is effect zero i haven't put a value in here because it is irrelevant however when it comes to the fire flicker i'm on port 12 i'm going to be controlling by accessory 2002 notice these are all controlled by the same accessory address you can have as many controlled by one address as you want again i've set it to be turned on when the direction is set to one the effect i'm using is effect one which is the fire flicker so i've set it to a maximum value of 4095 
and then the effect value is 500. Now what this means is that when the system looks to make the LED flicker, it will look for random values between 4095 and 500 and flicker it at a set of random timings. That's why each flicker is different to any other flicker. So let's just have a look at those in action. So as I turn the lights on, he says, pressing the controller, it's very difficult to see on the camera, but actually these three LEDs are completely different brightnesses. This is obviously the 500. It's far less bright than the other two. If I then bring in the flicker, you can see that the LED is just flickering there at that random value. Now, if I wanted it to, if you like, be a slightly duller flicker, then all I need to reduce, do is reduce that value of 4095 probably down to about 2000. Going back to the setup system, I've also got that arc welder example. Now that is on a different board address. It's on board 41 and uh, it's on attached to port four. Now don't forget with the port, there's 16 ports, but they start at zero and work up to 15. Hence I've got that end port there, 15. That is the extreme end of the board. This one's being controlled by accessory number 2007. Once again, it will be triggered when the direction is set to one. Obviously you can swap this to zero, you know, make do whatever suits you. Uh, the reason I've done it this way is that it would mean that it would be possible to synchronize the LEDs turning on and off with a turnout. So if you wanted to sort of have some signals or something to show the turnout direction, you can do that at the same time. The effect this time is effect three. And because it's an arc welder, I want it to be the maximum brightness and then the effect value I want to be zero because obviously an arc welder is sort of an on or off flash. So that is how the code is written. So once again, if I just turn on my arc welder, you can see that that is flickering away in a random way in as close an effect to an arc welder as I could get. Now the final effect is the gas light system. Now I was asked to create a gas light effect some time ago and what I've done for the gas light I've literally commented out my normal on off lights and I've duplicated it down here the same addresses same ports this time though the effect number is two and i've set a value of 2000 for the maximum brightness and 500 for the minimum brightness now if you're doing gas lights you want these numbers to be reasonably close this isn't a bad sort of set of values the way the gas light effect works is gas lights when they flicker do not flicker as a firewood flicker. It's a very, very fast flicker and it just sort of reduces in brightness just for a fraction of a second at random intervals. So that is what the effect is set to do. The closer this value is to this value, the more subtle the effect will be. Uh, as you'll see, it's quite difficult to actually pick this effect up on the camera. So here are the gas lights in operation. You'll notice that the flicker is very, very subtle. In fact, it's very difficult to pick it up on the camera. I have set those values at 2500 to try and make it more visible on the camera. To be honest, if I was using this on the layout, I'd probably set the values at around 2000 and 1000 so that the effect is even more subtle but obviously at that point nothing would pick up on the camera now as you've seen these are being turned on and off through my controller here but 
obviously if you were running this off an NCE system or a DCC uh, EX it is now isn't it not DCC++ if you've got your own controller then obviously you can just connect any controller to the now rail system and by changing the addresses obviously these are addresses that are very very high if you lowered the addresses down to sort of normal DCC addresses you could just turn your effects on and off through your normal DCC controller so that is the main update for the 0.9.1 version there are some changes to the uh, loco controller commands i've made some improvements added some extra functionality in but i'm going to do a separate video on building loco controllers because they are a subject that needs to be tackled on their own as it's quite a big subject so that's about it for this update again if you want to get the latest version just download the latest version i've got some requests already in from various people of items they want one of them is loconet integration i'm also going to integrate a couple of mp3 players and i've also been asked about limiting which controllers can control various accessories so that people can isolate certain parts of the system for a particular operator those are some of the items that i'm looking at putting in future versions again there's a link at the bottom of the page if you want to email me about any other changes or put a suggestion in the youtube comments so that's it for today i think i will be working as hard as possible on the next version but obviously with an exhibition in about 10 weeks time I've got a lot of buildings to complete and that's why I needed the DCA9685 LED system finished now. <laughs> there is that bit you want to make something for everybody else but sometimes you've got to be a little bit selfish and get your own layout finished. So hope that's been useful and thanks for all those who are testing the system. It's been really helpful and the feedback has been really useful. So that's it for this update. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.